Now this cat water color tutorial will teach you how to add whiskers to any of your pet's portraits. Now I've taken some footage from a video on how to paint a kitten, but you'll be able to apply these techniques to no matter what wildlife painting or watercolour animal you're working on. At least that way you get some idea on how I paint whiskers by the end of this video. Hi, now my name is Paul Hopkinson. I'm an online art tutor and I specialise in teaching realistic wildlife in watercolour, including your much loved pets. Oh and also don't forget click on subscribe down below because when you do that and then click on that little bell icon, YouTube will let you know when I put a brand new video on here for you to watch. Now whiskers, here we go. Watercolour white, same procedure again, and you want this to a creamy consistency is what we're looking for. And if you're not sure about doing the whiskers, if you feel a bit uncertain, practice on some scrap paper first, okay? Now I've done some testing out here already, so what I've actually done, I've got my paint consistency to a more of a creamy consistency. So I can paint sort of a straight line without that line breaking on the paper. Size double zero brush for me, so I tend to use most of the time. I'm going to load it, I'm going to roll it as a pull away, I'm going to give it a tap on some kitchen roll. Now, as I'm doing here, test this technique out before you go to your main painting. Because I know that people tend to think about whiskers sometimes, not everybody, but some people do, and a little bit mm, scary having to paint them fine whiskers. So try it out first, think about this natural arc, this natural curve in your wrist and also within your fingertips. And then when you start painting the line, ghost over the area, I call it ghosting. So the idea is you kind of work out roughly where you want it to go, then using hardly any pressure, you apply that line, lifting off at the very end. So let's do another one. Apply it and lift off. Overlap one, apply it, lift off, and so on. That's what you're doing, applying and lifting off. Now as it starts to break up on the paper there, like it's doing now, that's when you want to reload that brush. Okay, let's, let's just put one through that little gap there, shall we? Yeah, just like that. Reload the brush and then start again. The reason why I always start from the inside of a, an animal, for example, a cat's head, okay, is because very often you start off with a thicker line or sometimes even a dot like that. But as you do pull away, it will taper. And then you can add a little bit more color in there. So just add a bit of burnt umber in there. And this is um, Burnt Sienna. So Burnt Umber and Lamp Black was original and then Burnt Sienna over the top. Just to add that extra element, that extra kind of colour to the tips of some of these whiskers. So you can do all sorts of ideas like that. Okay, so use barely any pressure. So two hairs and air is all you're going to be doing when you add all these little layers on and these very fine lines. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pop a little link in the top corner just up there look. And that's how to paint fine lines and also working with different paint consistencies and which is basically the thicknesses which I go through as well within that video. So take a look at it and let me know how you get on. Let's go for it. I'll start probably around here and then a little sweep. And no one going up the other way, so I'm going to cross one over slightly. Barely see that one, can't you? And then down the side here, and up the way here. Now looking towards the top, we've actually got, I'm going to have to turn my paper around for this, it comes up to there, alright, it goes all the way down to here, and we've got another one that branches around that way, so I'm going to turn my board around, and kind of replicate that that way around, because it's the way my hand naturally kind of flows when I'm painting. So it's going to go right through the ear there and then into the background just a little bit from the top of this black area. Reload. Then come back in and start again. You want this to be fairly bright. And then a bit more. And to there. Got two hairs there, so I'm just going to split those apart. That's one. Let's do the other one, which is from the same location again from this area here, but that branches out towards here. So it's a bit of a, it actually comes out about there, doesn't it? So we'll start about there, and then curves around, and then tapers away. Then we've got another one, which goes about there. Oh, you can barely see that one. Let's go over that one again. 
So again, if these are too bright, you can always tone them back down again afterwards if need be. And then we've got the odd one here and there as well. So there you go. So that's how to kind of just pop some on very quickly. If you find they're too bright, as I say, we can tone them down. And then we've got to think about the ones coming off the side of the mouth as well. So if I look at that on the photograph, what I'm looking at, oh, I'll tell you what we have got. We've got one up here as well, haven't we? I just see it coming out the top of this black area here and goes at an angle, way too thick, just about there. Now if it's too thick, what you can do, you come back in, get a damp clean brush, just soften it down and blend it away like so. Let it dry and we'll go over the top again. As simple as that, that's all you got to do. Now then, the side of the mouth. The same thing applies again, same procedure. Try and keep it nice and fine, nice and thin. There you go, there's one. And again, oh, is that a paint? There's two. And then we've got some which are kind of branching across that, haven't we? So they're going to come over this way. Three. And the same there, four. Just very lightly touching the paper. Go over the top of that one. And the same again. So this actually wants quite a few around there, doesn't it? And these are quite curly ones, so it's like a bit of an arc. But mine a little bit too straight at the beginning. But then again, I do need to continue this one down. Just picking it up. The same with that one, so it's a bit of a curl. And we've got a few more to go in. So I'll carry on now. Now you know what you've got to do. I'll come with these all the way around and then add them onto this side as well. Okay? So let's get cracking. So there you go, that's how to paint the whiskers. Well, hey. So all you need to do now, if you need toning down in places, so if there's some one or two whiskers which is a little bit too bright or it doesn't finish right, or for example here is a bit of a blob. So I'm just going to tone that down with a little bit of that, um, the, the uh, raw sienna we mixed earlier on. And also that one there, I think I'll tone down a little bit, just barely touching it. Again, you've got to be careful, you don't want to go over it too much, otherwise it would just blend it away. And the very ends of some of these are starting to go a bit kind of raw sienna -y. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the ends of some of these whiskers. Remember, one fell swoop, just a one strike, that's all you want. And the same probably to some of these on the right hand side. Just trying to see where I've been. <laughs> just about to see where the colour is on there, so I can see where I've gone. So there. What about the main one above the, above the eye, which is this one here? These are quite prominent kind of whiskers, aren't they? They really are. That does tend to fade, so I'm going to put a little bit on that one as well. And this one I've just touched over, like so, and that one there. Okay. So, I think